start. Um, hello, everybody. It's my pleasure today to uh, introduce uh, uh, Zenfu Wang to the Asia Pacific PDE seminar. And uh, Professor Wang just recently got to the Beijing International Center for Mathematical Research in Peking before he was appointed as a postdoc at the University of Pennsylvania as a Rademacher instructor. And so firstly, congratulations and Fu for this uh, great uh, tenure track position, which you got. And uh, Zen Fu will speak about quantitative methods for the mean field limit problem. Please start. Okay, thank you, Daniel, for very uh, kind uh, uh, invitation and uh, introduction. Um, so I will talk about a year's work, um, uh, mostly joined with Pierre Emmanuel Jaban, uh, my PhD supervisor, and also recently uh, joined with Didier Bridge as well. Uh, so this is the talk, uh, our mean field limit problem. Uh, so over years, we introduced two new methods, uh, quantitative methods, namely uh, relative entropy method and uh, uh, modulated, modulated uh, uh, free energy method. Uh, you will see later. Um, so, so let's start. So, uh, so our problem, the mean field limit problem, is uh, is in a very large class of problem. It's called larger n limit. So basically, we want to do uh, passing from microscopic description to macroscopic description. Like we're starting from particle system. And uh, as the number of particles n goes to infinity, we hope uh, to get a reduced uh, description, uh, usually by a fluid equation, uh, or Boltzmann, a kinetic type equation, for instance. Um, so, so this is um, part of Hubert 6 problem, but Hubert 6 problem has a lot of problems. Uh, it's like bridge atomic point of view to continuous point of view. Uh, this idea dates back to like uh, 19th century uh, due to Maxwell and Boltzmann. So at that time, uh, atomic point of view or mentor is not very uh, popular. So they like uh, derive a Boltzmann equation, now that's called Boltzmann equation, to describe the evolution of uh, dilute gas. So they're starting from like a uh, collision model, then if you assume in some molecule chaos, uh, you can get a kinetic equation uh, describing the phase space density evolution of dilute gas. Uh, so this is uh, the type of problem that you say an n goes to, three, goes to infinity and if you recover a reduced to a PD model, for instance. Uh, there are a lot of problems. Um, for instance, nowadays, um, deriving Boltzmann equation or Landau type equation, or in our problem is mean field limit, it's deriving uh, Vlasov type kinetic equation or just aggregation diffusion type PD. Um, in quantum mechanics, in quantum, like people do mathematics, mathematically doing quantum dynamics, uh, they study Boson Einstein condensation. They're also starting from uh, a large system, like a linear um, Schrodinger equation, and they want to derive a Hartree equation or other nonlinear Schrodinger equation from the large uh, linear. Uh, Schrodinger equation. Like in probability setting last century, the like 1990s, it's very popular, like scaling limit problems. It's also in this flavor, uh, really called hydrodynamic limit, mm, also like thermodynamic limit. It's all in this flavor. Okay. Uh, but I want to narrow down the problem and uh, give you the exact setting of our problem. Okay. So uh, the original motivation comes from Newton's dynamics, the second order system. And uh, so this is just the n particle system and the particles um, evolves or moves uh, under their interactions. So they interact with each other and they move uh, according to their interactions. So it's just the Newton's second law. Uh, so we consider here, for instance, uh, n particles, all those particles are identical. So they have mass one over n. So the total mass is one. Okay, so xi is the, so xi here is the, uh, xi here is the, uh, xi here is the position. So vi is the velocity. So the second equation here is just the Newton's second, second law of motion. So the acceleration 
equals to the interaction force. Um, uh, so people believe, and also people already use this a lot to do simulations. Um, as n goes to infinity, so the original Newton's dynamics can be approximated by a uh, Vlasov equation. So this PD. So this PD is a linear PD. Uh, F is a phase space density. So it's a, it's a probability density which describes the phase space density of, uh, for instance, plasma. Um, okay. So in particular, right, if we choose K as the gravitational force or Coulomb force, so then it's just uh, uh, the inverse square law. So if you choose K as the singular interaction, the inverse square law, so then the this PD is a very famous Vlasov person equation, the Vlasov person system, uh, if you want. Um, so this people use this to describe the evolution of plasmas or to describe the large scales uh, cosmological model, like uh, here uh, you, you treat, uh, you treat uh, each particle Xi as a galaxy, for instance. Okay, so how to rigorously derive from Newton's dynamics to this Vlasov person equation? So in particular, we choose K as one over X square, by like inverse square law, so it's still open. So there are, there are many, uh, there, there are several results like over the last 10 years uh, on how to derive Vlasov type equation from particle system. Um, so I just name a few, um, but uh, the original problem is still open. Okay. The recent result, like uh, my result with uh, Pierre Emmanuel, is we can treat all the kernels uh, K, which is bounded, but you don't need to uh, impose assumptions uh, on the derivatives. So Safati and During recently um, give a new method that modulated uh, potential energy, so they can treat the case uh, with monokinetic case. It's not uh, the target equation, it's not this PD, but the Euler person. So, so given you a position X, so the velocity is uniquely determined. So it's called monokinetic uh, equation, so or Euler uh, Poisson system. Uh, but uh, I, I will not talk about this problem. And so there's a question here from there. Uh, oh, not a test. Okay. Uh, but uh, in this talk, I will not talk about second order system. I just use this as a very famous motivation. So so our program mostly focuses on this case, the first order system. Uh, in this first order system, so the dxi, right, the time derivative of position or velocity is determined by the interaction. So, uh, so this actually is a zero mass limit of second order system. So one example is, is really uh, one component plasma models. Uh, but uh, they, you can use this uh, first order uh, SDs, here I call it IPS, Interacting Particle System, uh, to model other, a lot of phenomena, right? uh, as in like flocking model, swarming model, uh, in social science, as you see in the next page. Uh, they have is, uh, the merit of its own, but uh, this is also a, a zero mass limit of second order system. Okay. Um, so if we consider K singular, right, the problems still capture a lot of difficulties of the previous problems. Okay, uh, we focus on this case, we're starting from first order system, and we hope uh, to establish and quantify the convergence from this IPS uh, to mean field dynamics. Okay, uh, so if you're, if you're not very familiar with uh, stochastic uh, setting, uh, you can just treat this as zero. So it's purely deterministic system. So if we add noise there, so then it's uh, stochastic uh, differential equations and the sigma n right, is just uh, the strength of noise. Okay, so k again right, is the two body interaction force. Uh, so the mean field dynamics, um, so formally you can think, right? So as n goes to infinity, right, this, this noise becomes the Brownian, uh, the, Brownian, uh, the Laplacian, right? So here, right, if you 
if you're using empirical mirror, right, so this summation becomes a convolution. So K convolves empirical mirror. So if we expect the empirical mirror of all particles can be approximated by the, the RUBA, by the limit uh, density, so then this uh, velocity field, right, this velocity field can be replaced by this velocity field, right? So that's why, right, so we hope uh, the interacting particle system uh, will be approximated by the mean field dynamics um, yeah, for certain k, right, for certain k. Okay, um, yeah, so that's our goal. So our goal is one to establish uh, the mean field limit from IPS to mean field dynamics, uh, but uh, for k singular. So if k is Lipschitz, right, if the interaction k is Lipschitz, right, uh, and bounded, for instance, right, so you can, you can take derivative, the derivative is bounded, then it's classical result, then the convergence is classical. So uh, you will see that in, 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 few, in two pages later. Okay. So I just want to mention uh, a little bit uh, possible applications or motivations. Um, so classically, right, uh, the particle system, right, is used in statistical mechanics, like uh, the particles can be ions and electrons in plasmas, uh, or as I said, right, it can be galaxies, right, in large scales, uh, cosmological model. And nowadays, uh, at least uh, like 10 years ago, so people starting to study like uh, Floki models, swarming models, maybe more earlier, like a famous model called Cook smell. Uh, they also use like this type of particle system to modeling like uh, to model like Floki behavior. Okay, in social science, economics, right? So you, you probably have heard like mean field dynamic, uh, mean field games, right? Uh, like opinion dynamics. You can use a particle system to model the opinion evolution. Uh, recently, right, so since the uh, stochastic gradient descent method works pretty well uh, in deep neural network, right? So recently, uh, you can use, you can also use interacting interacting particle system to do like uh, distribution sampling, right? Uh, in particular, uh, uh, we use uh, similar algorithms. Sorry. Ideas, we use similar ideas to do the uh, single hall berry center. So we have several distributions and we want to find the new distribution, which is uh, a berry center of the previous distributions. So we can just uh, uh, use several point X1 to Xn and let this point move according to the negative gradient direction of a potential variable. Okay, so particle systems uh, is also useful, like in recent very hot, uh, very popular machine learning tasks. Uh, so this uh, very famous difficulty, uh, it's called curse of dimensionality, right? Usually the number of particles is very large. So in physical setting, it can be as large as like 10 to 25. So if you just study the original particle system, it's almost impossible, right? Both numerically or analytically, so, uh, so this page, uh, I just copy from, uh, from my advisor, uh, Pierre Emmanuel Jaban. So, uh, so this is, uh, this is a usually size of the number of particles right, in different settings. Um, so you can see, right? So usually it's large, but actually sometimes it's not very large. Right? For instance, if you do some numerics, uh, so the number of particles usually is just uh, 1,000. So in this setting, uh, if you know how to quantify the convergence, right? So you want to use a reduced model, right? uh, for instance, PDE to replace original particle system. So it's very critical to know the convergence rate. So, but uh, classical result usually only gives you like for singular kernels, right? Usually you only have like uh, uh, um, qualitative result, not quantitative, okay. So we, all our result will be quantitative. You will see in the letter. Okay, so just to mention a few classical results uh, on mean field limit, like convergence from particle system to the 
uh, PD, I mean field dynamics I showed you earlier. So there are several results, uh, there are many, but uh, classical result uh, basically works on, uh, around the argument uh, people used to get the real Posner theory uh, for ODEs or uh, stochastic differential equations, SDEs. Okay. So it's basically by use the argument people use to get the Cauchy Lipschitz theory, or, or 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 in the or in the like uh, stochastic setting they call the coupling method. Right? Basically, you compare original particle system with a new particle system which you build up from the limit. Then you compare those two particle system and you can control the distance between them. Uh, the main argument there is, okay, so if K, the interaction is Lipschitz, and you can, you can just uh, get the stability estimate. Okay, that's classical result. Um, classical result, if you do some truncation, play around with parameters, uh, you can treat some singular kernels, but most time uh, you cannot have convergence rate. You can have like a, a qualitative result. Um, you can, so up to uh, subsequence, you have convergence, but you don't have convergence rate. Uh, you will see several results uh, later, uh, but I won't spend a lot of time on that. But if you try a very difficult uh, particle system, classical method is still uh, the first one to think. Okay, but uh, in our in this talk, we focus on singular kernels, right? Just to give you several examples on singular kernels. Okay, so one example is uh, so our uh, paper uh, like three years ago. So Kx is uh, Bill Safar law. So like in 2D case, right? So the particle system, if you choose Kx as a Bill Safar law, so the particle system corresponds to the um, so point vertex model. And if you take a, a large n limit or take a mean field limit, formally, if you get 2D uh, Navy stocks. Uh, so, so our result will give you the convergence from point vertex model to 2D Navy stocks. So, second example is the person kernel. So, it can be repulsive or attractive. Okay. So, um, so again, right? If it's second order system, like the limit is a brass of person uh, system, right? So, uh, people don't know how to do that. But uh, if it's repulsive. If Kx, the Poisson kernel is repulsive, that means here we take a, a positive sign. And so then, so now we can do that. Both for deterministic case, which is due to Safati and also the stochastic case, uh, which is our new result. Okay, so again, right, so, so we can treat some attractive case. Uh, but uh, the attractive force, right, the potential cannot be very singular. So here, lambda bigger than zero, lambda is positive. So means, so K actually is attractive force. So in particular, in 2D case, right, if you choose K like this, right, this Vx is a logarithmic uh, attractive potential. So then uh, the, the limit mean field dynamics is a very famous uh, Pedalec, Keller Seeger system, which people used to, to model uh, chemotaxis. Okay, so basically we can now treat this singular kernel and the repulsive one, right, for first order system and attractive one, um, yeah, for first order system as well. Okay, so we focus on first order system. Uh, so there are some results which we can, uh, we can do for second order system, for instance, uh, if K is bounded, or this is uh, the first one uh, I mentioned before. Okay. So there are several classical results, uh, uh, not classical, right? Like just last 20 to 30 years. Uh, so basically, uh, we will talk about uh, this one. Sorry, uh, this one and uh, this one. Okay. So the previous result uh, basically works around the classical method. Uh, and do some truncation, or you use some um, entropy one. So this is a recent result, and uh, you have convergence and also stronger convergence from point vortex model to 2D uh, Navier Stokes, Stokes, for instance. But uh, uh, it used a compactness argument, 
you only have uh, like uh, convergence, but without rate. Um, okay, so th those result um, is similar to the previous one, um, but again, right, without without uh, without rate. Okay, and uh, so this to the Euler case, this actually has rate, but uh, is different to our problem. So it's starting from we we'll prepare initial data. So this result actually is very good result. Uh, so, but it, it's like a Lagrangian like point of view, right? Starting from well prepared initial data, it's slightly different from uh, our theory. So our theory is kind of statistical point of view, and uh, and you have propagation of chaos. Like uh, if initially, right, IID, then you can show later is IID. So it's it's more close to the uh, regional setting, like uh, due to. Uh, Burzman, Cake, et cetera. So by this result, the 2D Euler case in last the uh, uh, 1990s is mostly like uh, uh, like numerical point of view, and you can do some uh, uh, you can do some computation, and the convergence is even second order. So it's a very nice result, but it's slightly different to our setting. Okay. So I won't spend a lot of time uh, talking about the old result because uh, basically we use a new framework. Um, it's not new, right? Uh, totally in kinetic theory, but it, it actually it's new uh, in mean field limit. Okay. So if you have questions, just let me know. Um, so let's talk about the let's talk about the problem, the setting of our problem. So since we are treating like a um, particle system with singular kernels, there's one uh, actually non-trivial problem. How do you um, how do you make sense of those particle systems? So actually, this is a non-trivial problem, and uh, uh, so there are many people working on that, right? Both in probability community and also in uh, Uh, both in both in probability community and uh, also in like uh, PDE community. So, but uh, since we are considering very singular kernels, uh, this actually is not possible. Um, okay, sorry. So, so we use a different point of view. We starting from, uh, we starting. Sorry. Uh, sorry, sorry, just. Uh, okay, uh, let, let's go on. So we, we use a different point of view, right? We use uh, the real equation, uh, the evolution of the joint distribution of all particles to replace uh, the original particle system. So it's, it's more easier to, uh, to make sense of the real equation then to make sense of the particle system. So now, so for instance, uh, what we use of this drawing is an uh, entropy solution. Uh, it's a weak solution to this uh, very high dimensional real equation, okay? Um, okay. So here, rho n, right, rho n is the joint distribution, right, since all particles are indistinguishable. So actually, rho n is symmetric property mirror. But Joan is in a very high dimension, so it's useless. So most of the time, uh, so we, we must uh, consider the marginals, right? We use marginals to capture the like temperature, pressure, right? To compute temperature, pressure, for instance. Okay. Um, okay. And who, there's a question. Yeah. Um, maybe uh, Professor Ben Goldis had the question to this, what you, he has now, he cannot speak. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear. I would like to clarify you, uh, you wrote about symmetric probability distribution measures. You mean invariance with respect to permutations? Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. so mm -hmm. here, uh, Joan, yeah, sorry, so I just get uh, interrupted by uh, some, some messages. Sorry about that. Uh, so, okay. So Joan is a symmetric probability mirror. So means, right, so if you permute the indices, right, you get the same mirror, okay. So it's, it's basically, you get this from um, 
So all those particles are indistinguishable. Or, so, so then you get exchangeable or symmetric probability mirrors. Okay. Yeah, thanks for your question. Uh, okay, so, um, so, so we must consider the rho and k, right? So it's the k marginals, right? k marginal is just uh, you integrate, right? You integrate all the remaining variables, so you get a lower dimensional uh, distribution, right, which is still symmetric. And if you integrate the original particle system, integrate original, uh, the original, the real equation, you get the evolution of k marginal. So the k marginal involves k plus one marginal. So it's called BBDKY hierarchy. So, so this is a classical work, right, to formally derive the effective equation, right? You do some uh, uh, truncation and a certain, a certain level, right? And uh, for instance, and, and k marginal, right? If you, do trun if you do truncation and k marginal, right? If you get a closed equation, right? So uh, that's the euro way. So just to give you an example, so if we, if we so for instance, right? So if the, the one marginal, the one marginal, the evolution of ma one marginal will involve two marginals. So, so here is two marginals. So if we assume molecule chaos, and uh, so which means, so two marginals can be write as tensor product of one marginal. So in this case, we will get, uh, as n goes to infinity, we will recover the mean field dynamics. So, I mean, of course, this is the easier setting, but this is exactly the same as Boltzmann derived the Boltzmann equation. So he made a very strong assumption called a molecule chaos. So like particles behave like independently. So you can recover, so you can get Boltzmann equation. And here we can get the, so our mean field dynamics. Okay. Um, so, but this is not true, right? If we want to do this rigorously, right? So the previous argument is not true, right? It's too uh, um, optimistic. Uh, why? Right, because we study from interacting particle system, right? Those particles are indeed uh, interact with each other. So they have correlations. So even initially, you assume uh, all those particles are IID, right? So, but uh, as time goes on, they have correlations, right? So uh, how to relax this, right? How to do this? So uh, Keck introduced a relaxed notion, right? Now there's people called Keck scales. And uh, originally he, he wanted to derive the space homogeneous Boltzmann equation. Uh, so we use the same notion. So what's the Kex chaos, right? Kex chaos, right? You don't need to read this uh, sentence. The basically, basically this means asymptotic independence for a finite group. Uh, what does this mean, right? So, so we have n particles, or right? we have a sequence of uh, probability measure, measures rho n, right? So if we just look at uh, uh, any finite group, let's say we just look at two particles, uh, so we get a rho n2, right, two marginals. If you say an n goes to infinity, right, rho n2 will behave like independently, right? It's asymptotic independence, right, for finite group, right? If you only look at k particles, as n goes to infinity, they behave, they behave like independent. Okay, so this is Kex chaos. It's asymptotic independence uh, for a finite group, Okay, so what we want to do is the following, right? It's propagation of chaos. So it's uh, is to make uh, this diagram uh, commute. So if we send n goes to infinity, right? Originally, we can, uh, of course, assume uh, particles, all particles are IID, or they are chaos chaotic, okay? So we want to show as uh, if we run, so this is like the right-hand side, the right-hand side, uh, uh, sorry, the left-hand side, we run the uh, interacting particle system. So we get a uh, marginal distribution and time t. Right? This side, we run the mean field dynamics. So we get uh, the rho, rho t and time t, right? rho bar t and time t, okay? So what we want to do is, if initially we have Kex chaotic property, so we want to show this property will be preserved as time goes on, right? So this is called propagation of chaos. So this is, uh, our goal, right? So once you realize this uh, by the previous intuitive argument, right? So actually you can, you, you get the propagation of chaos or you get the mean field limit. You realize the uh, complexity, right? Reduce the complexity by get, deriving a mean field dynamics. Okay. 
So this is a classical way, right, to do that. So, but we don't use this, right? We use a very straightforward way. Uh, people don't use this in mean, few limited problem before, but we find this is very straightforward and very uh, effective. Okay, so we use relative entropy. Uh, excuse me. So we use relative entropy. So this is a, okay. So this is relative entropy right, by scale by n. So if, since we scale by n, this bring everything to dimension one, right? So we can compare this quantity with dimension one quantity, right? hn with h1, we can compare that. Since everything, right, is nice, it's mono, uh, so it's uh, exchangeable or indistinguishable. So hn, right, the n-dimensional relative entropy scaled actually can con uh, control the k-dimensional relative entropy scaled. Okay, so what does this mean, right? Rho n is the distribution, right? Rho n is the distribution and n dimension, right? The, is the distribution of all particles, right? So rho bar is the limit. So this, this quantity actually can quantify the convergence. In what sense, right? In the following sense, but right? since h n can choose h k and by classical CKP inequality, right? So h k square can control the L1 distance, right? As long as we can show, right, the relative entropy goes to zero as n goes to infinity, we can get actually strong convergence for any finite marginals, right? We can get the convergence. Okay, so this is the idea. So basically, right, so we, we so this is the, the main, uh, the, the, the starting point, right? So the, the goal now is the following, right? Since initially we can assume uh, and the initial time relative entropy is zero, for instance, if IID, right, this is zero. And our goal is to, to show the time derivative of relative entropy is small, okay? As long as we can show the time derivative of relative entropy is small, we can show up to certain time, uh, right? So HN is small, uh, so which means as n goes to infinity, you get zero, so we get the convergence, right? We get the convergence of n in k marginal, n in k marginal, and the convergence is is in L one sense is strong. Okay, just a question, Zenfu. Yeah. So the yeah. k's are smaller or equal than n. Um, k, yeah, k should be small. So k is should be in, uh, like is in small o n. Right. Ah, okay. Yeah, but k is fixed. K is fixed. But if you want to k grows with n, right? K should be like in uh, should be in small order of n. But uh, this is only in uh, in in like uh, if you have the convergence in one over n sense, right? So mm -hmm. our goal is to show right the convergence, right? This will converge to zero. Right? Yeah. Okay. So if k grows with n, right? So you must uh, uh, so you must uh, guarantee right h n. Uh, is also very small, right? You must uh, make sure, right? K times H K will be small, right? So, hmm. Yeah, but but you can just think K is fixed, finite number. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So this is one example of our result. Uh, I think I. Uh, so I just. Uh, okay. So, so so our argument, right? So is like weak strong type, right? So since K, right? Since K is singular. So the Liouville equation only, so rho n, the solution of the Liouville equation is a weak, weak solution. So we must uh, use the strong property, right? strong regular property of rho bar. So rho bar is the limit, right? The solution of mean field dynamics, okay? Uh, so we assume rho bar is uh, very strong. So we can use like weak strong uh, type argument, right? We, uh, to, we can use the strong regularity of rho bar to compensate uh, the, the Rho n, right? compensated the, the very like uh, uh, compensated rho n. Okay, so uh, uh, so the argument is like we we derive we uh, we control the time evolution of h n, and in the end we can get the estimate. Okay, and uh, so so this result works for a large class of uh, interaction kernel k, right? So k is in some negative sublevel space, and divergence k is also in some negative sublevel space. Okay. Uh, in particular, right, in particular, right, so also this, this capital M, right, this capital M bar, right, is, uh, is just a constant, right, which depends on the choice of K, okay. So in particular, right, 
in particular, if originally, right, if, uh, if and initially, right, HN is zero, which means, uh, for instance, you can choose IID data, okay? So we can get the, this is in the order one over N, okay? So, so that's why I said, Previously, right, you can choose k as like a smaller order of n. Okay, so if you have convergence rate uh, with n is one over n, so you can choose k up to n, right? Small in small order of n. Right. Okay, so this is like Grunwald type estimate, a uh, Grunwald type uh, argument, right? You evolve with hn and uh, um, and complete uh, the estimate by Grunwald. Okay. So in particular, right, so this works for Biel-Safar law, right? Why, right? So, I mean, Biel-Safar law is divergence free, right? So definitely this condition is satisfied. And also you can choose a potential V, you can choose a potential V which is bounded. So you can realize K and the divergence of this matrix, right? So of course this is bounded. Okay. But we can do this directly, right? This is a general theory. Uh, we can do this directly. Uh, I don't have a lot of time, so uh, so I, I will just uh, briefly mention the proof. Uh, so I, I have uh, six lectures online uh, explaining all these uh, results uh, in details, uh, this topic in details. You can find the detailed uh, lectures uh, online on my YouTube channel. Okay, so the idea, right, again, right, is to derive, uh, is uh, estimate the time evolution of relative entry. But this is not uh, really true, right? Since Ruin is a weak solution, we cannot really just do like this. But it's only formal uh, computation, uh, which we can make these rigors. Okay, but you can think in this way. So if we, we do the time uh, evolution of relative entry, right, we have two terms. And this term, basically, we can throw away and uh, this term we can control using some large deviation estimate. Okay. Uh, okay, there are several tricks, uh, several tricks, right? Uh, for this is phi, right? So our, our choice of phi. If you do symmetrization, right, you can get uh, phi looks like this. Okay. Uh, the bounded term we can control easily, right? There are only these two terms. So if we consider, right, if we consider the 2D navy strokes or 2D Euler case, so K is a Bill Safar law, so we can, so this is zero, right? So then the Bill Safar law it has one order singularity, like this is one over X, right? So if Zuba is singular, right? So this, we can recover one X minus Y, right? So this is, it behaves like one over X minus Y. So this term actually is again bounded. Right, for Bill Safar law, okay? So we can, so after symmetrization, so phi x, y actually is bounded. So we can treat this case, right? So by a large deviation estimate. So basically we can, we can have like uh, this estimate, right? We can have this estimate. We can show, we can show, right? Uh, this is just a Jensen type inequality. We can get this, we can get this. But this is just uh, we recover one relative entropy, uh, and uh, and this this extra term we must uh, compensate by exponential. So this actually is a integral version of uh, Young's inequality, right? It's a Jensen type inequality. So basically, we change our mirrors, we change this Rowan the distribution of particles to some very nice mirrors, right? So change this to Rowan bar, right? We change the uh, reference measure to Ruin bar. Ruin bar is IID, right? It's just uh, n copies of Ruin bar. Okay, so we can we can just uh, control this term, right? As long as we can show this term, uh, the second term is small, and uh, we are done, right? So how do how do you control the second uh, second uh, term, right? Is uh, like a deviation estimate. So I just uh, uh, I just uh, put it here. Just put it here. So basically, we, we use the two cancellation rules of our phi uh, like repeatedly. Right? We, we expand everything. We use these two cancellation rules repeatedly. And this corresponds to uh, the classical large deviation estimate if, we, if phi is uh, continuous. Right? So this, if phi is continuous, uh, this corresponds to the Bernoulli's and Bruno's uh, large deviation estimate uh, in this type. Uh, but uh, in our setting, we 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 should to use we should use uh, phi 
is uh, not continuous, it's only bounded, right? So we prove this by combinatorics. Uh, but recently, um, so a Duke group by these three guys, three guys, they, they proved this, uh, they proved this theory, the light deviation estimate uh, by Martingales. So you can see details in, uh, in, like, in my lectures. Um, okay, so this is the previous result. So recently progress is the following, right? So previous work only works for something like in a bounded regime, like uh, the antiderivative is bounded or itself is bounded. Also we need the divergence is kind of bounded or the antiderivative of a divergence of the kernel is bounded. But basically it all works uh, in some bounded regime. Um, so there's a very bad term for if you just evolve, it just uh, evolves the uh, relative entropy. There's this uh, very bad term, so divergence k, right? So if we choose k as a person kernel, right, the gradient of person kernel, so this becomes a Dirac, right? So we don't really need to know how to deal with this term. Right? We must cancel this term. Um, so after our result, uh, this result, right, uh, Savati, um, with uh, her student Durings, they, they, they propose a new method, uh, which can, we can treat mean field limit problem with very singular kernels, but only for, uh, for like a deterministic system. There's no stochastic terms. So they can treat these potentials, uh, cooling potentials uh, with possible um, perturbations. What their method is like, okay, so V is a potential, right? So they can they consider this quantity called modulated energy, right? Mu n is empirical measure of particles. So rho bar is the limit, right? So basically they use this type of uh, quantity to control the distance between mu n and rho bar, right? So if mu n can to, uh, convert to rho bar, right? That's it, right? That's mean field limit. So basically this is like, uh, if you don't consider singular cases, right? This is just uh, uh, like a, a Fourier type norm. Okay, but it's not that easy. So, so later we combine those two methods. So we introduce, we use a new method called modulated free energy, which is a weighted version of relative entropy. Right. So here, right, E n is modulated free energy. So if G n equals to one, right, this also equals one. This is just a uh, scaled relative entropy, right, just as before, but. Uh, uh, but uh, if we just do that, right, we cannot treat the very singular kernels, right? So we, we, we introduce some weights, right? we introduce some weights. Um, so here for simplicity, I don't want to bother you with the, the, the form of this, this Gibbs measure or tilted Gibbs measure, but uh, in the end, what uh, it is, right? It's just two terms, right? It's first the relative entropy and the modulated uh, potential energy. So I can tell you, this is just the expectation of uh, Savati's uh, modulated uh, potential energy, take expectation, and then we multiply one over theta. So one over theta actually is temperature, right? So if you integrate by uh, in physics, right? Okay, so actually this is like a, a free energy part, right? So this is like, uh, uh, um, this is entropy, first is entropy part, and this is the, the potential part, but it's not just like uh, we study PD or we just study the particle system, right? We compare particle system and the, the PD, right? So that's called modulated free energy. Okay, so it seems there's a question. Okay. Okay, so this is, uh, so this is the new method. So now if we evolve uh, the, 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 the modulated free energy, right? So the previous band term disappears and this term will only help, actually we don't use this term, it's modulated efficient information, we screw this term away and we try to control this new term, right? So yeah, that's the idea, right? There are a lot of details, but uh, uh, we don't have a lot of time. I want to wrap up, right? So this is the result for pillar kilo Sigma system so if you choose V as attractive one and choose K like uh, the minus gradient V, so we can control the, this term, uh, we can control this term very easily by the previous large deviation estimate. So now gradient V, it behaves like one over X, right? So we can, so this can be controlled by uh, relative entropy, right? So this is very easy. 
So in the end, we can get this uh, convergence result for Kelo-Sigo system, okay? And actually this we can do for every subcritical case, like as long as the Kelo-Sigo -like system does not develop blow up, we can do that. Okay, but for more, um, but for more um, singular kernels, we need to more careful treat. Uh, I don't have a lot of time, so I just give you the main result, right? The main result. You can see more de a detailed de uh, uh, discussion at, uh, in, in, in the lectures. Okay, so basically we can treat like two categories. So one category is a stochastic category, right? So we can treat attractive part and repulsive part. The attractive part it can be as singular as uh, logarithmic, and the repulsive, result, repulsive part can be as singular as reads, right? and also with possible perturbations. So the second category is like uh, vanishing viscosity. Right? This is very useful in uh, random matrices. Right? So in this case, we can only treat the repulsive potential uh, as, as here. Okay? So that's all. Uh, that's, uh, uh, but of course, right, this is just uh, several examples. We can treat more, but uh, I, I didn't put here. Okay, uh, I think uh, my time is there, and I will stop here. Uh, if you have questions, uh, I can answer. So this is the reference. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Zenfu, for the very interesting uh, overview of, uh, of this interesting research. Are there any questions? Okay, there is. Uh, Professor Van Goldis has a question. He can speak. Right. Thanks. It's a very interesting talk, so one could ask many questions. Probably there is not enough time. Uh, but first, uh, in your first theorem, you showed us you assume that uh, interaction kernel is in W minus 1 infinity. And then uh, the equation, the dynamics uh, has only weak solutions. Yes, am I right? Uh, yes. Um, so K here is very weak. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, so if we have only weak solutions, do we have uniqueness? Oh, yeah. We don't uh, necessarily have uniqueness. So for the particle system, as I said, um, so we use this, right? We use the Liouville equation to replace the particle system. So we ah, okay. we don't necessarily have the uniqueness uh, for the Liouville equation. But uh, we can prove uh, for any entropy solution, rho n here uh, can be, uh, so the marginals will converge to the limit. Mm -hmm. Okay. We will converge to the so, same limit, yeah. So, so whatever solution you have, the theorem will be valid, yes? Uh, excuse me? Whatever, uh, if you have many solutions, you can take one of them and you still your theorem is valid, yes? Yeah, so we can just pick one rho n, yeah, and yeah, this rho n yeah. will convert yeah, to uh, rho bar. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, uh, another thing, uh, similar results which give quantitative bounds for rate of convergence were found by Fournier, but only in the case of independent particles. So I understand that your result is the first one which considers dependent system of dependent particles. Is it correct? Uh, you mean this one? Uh, yeah, uh, this is um, um, perhaps, yes, perhaps that one, but they assume, I don't remember exactly, but I remember that they assume only in, uh, completely independent particles. Oh, you mean initially they have the, 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 uh, the x1 to xn are id? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so this, is, this goes towards dependence. Uh huh. Yeah, I, I see. So this is very nice. Uh, yeah, we, we don't need uh, um, we do, we don't need to assume initially RID. We only need to assume initially like HN is small. Right? Yeah. So we need a uh, so so like uh, this is like propagation type result, right? So you want to show propagation of certain things. Initially, we need we we need to have these things, right? Otherwise, it's not true. So yeah. we need uh, originally is uh, Keck's chaos, right? Yeah. Like, I can see that there is there is a question from uh, Professor Giga, so perhaps I will I will skip other questions. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so did your result apply to the music cases? Oh yeah. Uh, so so we need change a little bit, but uh, uh, so analyst. So this result, right? 
Um, so the previous result, well, this result works for like 2D Euler as well. So maybe we need to change, uh, so actually in, the, in our paper, we put this case there as well. Um, so, so if we really want to prove like a very general kernel like this, uh, we need the noise. So, uh, but at least for 2D navy stocks, 2D Euler, right, it works uh, at the same time. And uh, so this is a previous result, right? Uh, so we really use the noise to help us. So if we want to show like very general class of uh, kernels, but uh, if just for bias uh, it works uh, both for deterministic and stochastic. So for, the, for our new result, uh, so this general new result, so actually uh, it's different, right? So it's different. So if it's stochastic case, right, we can treat uh, this. Right. If you we have stochastic, uh, not we have brown emotion. You have the we can spread right. So originally they have the the aggregation behavior. We have the noise to uh, disperse that right disperse that. So we can treat the attractive uh, kernels, but if the the sigma n goes to zero, the vanishing viscosity case, all the uh, all the the like just determinist case. I don't think maybe that's not easy right. Uh, Um, I have also a question to you. Yep. So you mentioned at some point that uh, um, you use the DDT derivative only as uh, um, motivation or that one understands the main idea in the proof. Uh, you, you gave a proof. You mean here? Uh, I think before. Yes, here for instance. So your row n and row n bar, they are time uh, solution to time, time dependent solu uh, equations. So uh, why is it not possible then to write this equation? Why is it in general uh, false? Okay, so, so here right, you must make sense of certain things, right? Uh, so yeah, so I mean, you can formally do this commutation, but uh, you, you see, right, you win, uh, I mean, so, so uh, okay, <laughs> so how to say that? Um, so usually, right, so this relative entropy, we write as like two difference, right? So it's, uh, yeah. Uh, like uh, the the entropy of row n and uh, another term, right? Yeah. So so here, right? So yeah, we cannot just do that, right? Because um, so this is like we treat everything as, as classical solution, right? But but uh, yeah, we treat everything as classical solution, but actually it's it's not, right? Row n is not classical solution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, yeah, so we you don't like, know in general whether it's actually time differentiable. Okay, I see. Yeah. So there one needs to be in order to be more rigorous. One needs to yeah, yeah. We need to on yeah, the regular in the paper we write in the rigorous way. So, but the, you are, we are right then. It's uh, actually not a very uh, talk friendly. Right? So. No, no, it's good. I'm just wondering whether why you could not. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There are, we still have four minutes. If there is someone who has another question. Uh, please feel free to raise the hands. Yeah, there are two questions. One second, uh, maybe I give it now to first to Yoshikatsu. Okay. Yes. Uh, um, okay, my, this is my uh, continuation of my earlier question. You, uh -huh. it, you you estimate you derive a lot of couple of estimate for entropy relative entropy. This yeah. est does this estimate holds for deterministic case or not? Um, uh, so you you mean this? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, or oh, maybe so this uh, this works for all, right? So uh, no, uh, okay. So so here uh, maybe uh, this is uh, this actually uh, they have some assumption right for for this to be true. So like row bar, right? Row n actually need to be um, exchangeable. Uh huh. Uh huh. I see, uh, I see. So as long as row n is exchangeable, uh, as long as this makes sense, right? So uh, this is true. Okay. Uh, this part is fine, but uh, uh, you you are you are estimate for entropy. This yeah. needs uh, uh, stochastic, right? Right. No. Um. The second uh, the one before. Uh, yeah, this this theory, yes, for example. Oh, how, yeah, how this theory we need uh, stochasticity. Yeah. Uh -huh, I see. So if sigma uh, is zero, how how yeah, how, what happens? 
So I mean, if the sigma if if uh, I mean if sigma equals zero, for instance, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, I I don't believe this. So okay, on the for this, it's not true. If we just uh, if we just uh, treat this right very like uh, in some anti-derivative uh, class, um, anti-negative uh, surface wave class, this is not true, right? So okay. why? Because uh, we in, in this case we really use the noise. So mm -hmm. like uh, we we use the representation of the k. Uh, so in, in the integration or part. So integration of parts, certain um, certain terms will be absorbed by the. So you see, right? So we have these terms. Uh -huh. Ah, I see. I, thank you very yeah, much. Yeah. So we use the help of these terms. Um, yeah. You use this special to to squeeze something. Okay. Thank yeah, you very yeah, right. much. Mm. But but uh, but like I said, just for Bio Safar law, right? You 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 don't need to use this, right? You can just uh, store this term away. Yeah. So, so here, right, uh, when I'm talking about symmetrization and using all these things, right, so it works both for like uh, stochastic and dynamistic. Yeah. But this theory is not. This theory is not. Yeah. Thank you for your clarification. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks. Um, ben, you still have one minute if you want to ask a question. Ben. Ben, you can. You can speak if you want. Yeah, yeah. so uh, we can see the theorem on the screen right now, and this is conver uh, <laughs> estimates for convergence for fixed T. Now for some kernels, I guess we can have, uh, the, we can show the existence of invariant measure for the system. <laughs> and then is it possible say to, to interchange limits with respect <laughs> to N and T? Um, uh yeah that, that's a very good question um so so you say right so if particle system and the pd both have like invariant mirrors right have the equilibrium uh so can we like exchange the order of uh, large n limit and a large t limit yeah uh yeah that's a good question uh but uh, for 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 our setting uh maybe so so not for our setting right so there are some results right people study for instance um, I mean, that's separate pro problems, but uh, that's a very good question. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure I know the answer, right? So, <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, but that's a very good question. Um, possibly, right, you need to have like a uh, uniform in time uh, mean field limit first. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, so here, uh, we don't have uniform in time, right? If you send yeah. T very large, this blows up, right? So, uh, you don't know results of this type? Uh, I, 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 there are several results, right? So, mm, sorry, let me go to the very beginning setting. Uh, so there are several results in this type. Um, so for instance, you should choose K as a gradient of some potential V and yeah. V has very strong confinement. So like this, right? Like very strong confinement. So you have a, um, like a equilibrium. So then you can hope to get some uh, some mean field limit or propagation or chaos uniformly in time. So there are several results. I think like ten years ago, um, some French French group. Um, yeah. So you can you can you can have the convergence uniformly in time. Yeah. Zenfu, I, I want to invite everybody. I need to break up now and please apologize, Ben and Zenfu. Yeah. Um, there, everybody of you received an email with um, an invitation to the coffee break and it would be great if you continue the discussion in the coffee break. Okay. Yeah. I thank every attendee to, who joined the meeting today and uh, uh, yeah, we see each other hopefully all next week. Okay. 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 So, thank okay. you. Yeah. Yeah, we just Let's thank the speaker coffee. again by maybe uh, showing some reaction or just, yeah, thank you. Thanks, Sifu, for your great talk. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.